Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is these FootJoy golf shoes. These are very cool shoes. These are a little bit of vintage shoes, I would think. Um, not sure how old they are, but I, I'm guessing about over 20 years old. Um, they're good quality constructed leathers um, and um, leather soles and and unfortunately, it's seen its better days and the welt has come loose and it's torn up and we're gonna have to replace the welt all the way around. We're gonna do rubber full soles, okay? Even though this is a leather full soles, they use oil tanned leather so it doesn't dry out as you're wearing them into the golf course because it gets wet and dry, wet and dry. Regular leather is not gonna to last too long. With the, with the oil tanned leather, it's definitely much better than regular leather. Um, however, we're going to put rubber soles on here. We're going to salvage that, that backing there, that back plate, which basically the cleats are attached to. And then we're going to remake the shoe in clean and dye condition, make it look good again. Now this is about 380 for this job. And, um, and once it gets done, it'll look fairly like new shoes and hopefully it'll last another 20 years. All right, let's get started. Here goes nothing. All right. You know, my last video was kind of like in the in the dumps. Well, not really in the dumps, but you know, I was just not feeling that time. But luckily, that just is is very temporary for me. Usually, it just kind of sticks around for a day, and then and then it just kind of goes away. You know, it's normal. Everybody has those days, no? But the trick is, is that you've got to kind of let it go. Let it go. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> um, so anyway, you got to let it go. You know, you can't, you can't hold on to that. I mean, everybody goes through those moods, but the trick is, man, I'm telling you, you got to kind of get over it and, and be done with it. You know, tomorrow's another day. Sun will come up tomorrow. I'm just full of musicals today, aren't I? Let it go. Sun will come up tomorrow. What else can I tie this segment into? <laughs> oh, I got Zeus today with me. Zeusy, come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Zeusy, how am I going to shoot? Come on, get up here. Yeah, there you go. Come on, come here, come here, come here. There you go. There's Zeusy for you. You always want Zeus, and now you got him. Maybe we'll take him, we'll take him out in the back and play the play with B8 all all later. Okay, I don't want to say it. The word. Is that how you spell it? Oh. Okay, but the cleats are off. Now, what we're going to do, there are what's called key nuts underneath here, which holds the cleats onto you. See those T nuts right there? We're going to salvage those. Those are still in good shape. But we're going to, obviously, we're going to replace this top lift with a rubber top lift because, as you can see, I mean, it's a good idea to have leather, but, you know, eventually when leather gets wet, cold, wet, uh, dry, wet, dry, it's going to start falling apart. And um, that's what's going to happen. So we're going to replace that with rubber. Just not sure what rubber soles to use. There's some, several options, but we'll make it work. Some people save these nails and, you know, throw them in the trash, but my floor is a trash for the time being, and then I'll clean it up later. <laughs> yes, I do clean up my shop. You may not think so, but I do. Every week. Well, every day, and then the end of the week, we get a little bit more of a detailed cleaning.
Uh, the wealth is uh, wasted on this shoe. As you guys can see, it's dead. So we're gonna put a whole new wealth on there. <clears throat> I was thinking of maybe doing something fancy on the bottom. Somewhat fancy, but we've got the cleats on there. You can't really be too fancy with rubber soles, but we'll make it work. All right. All right. This is the plate in back of the sole, which hold the cleats on. Okay? So we're going to salvage that, basically reuse it. All right, let's continue. The wealth is half off. Sometimes we can get lucky with these threads because this is a chain stitch, right? It's a it's one thread basically, and um, if you catch it at the right spot, you can just kind of take it off in one piece. Let's try to put a little thinner on here. This is turpentine just to loosen up the glue a little bit. Let's see if you can pull that. Yay! <laughs> That's got it. That's got it. And more. Come on. This sucker's tough, man. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. There goes the last. Oh no. Luckily I moved my toes out of the way. Sucker's heavy. <sighs> Come on. Man. Should have pulled that with some tool or something. Okay, so we've got it all apart now. Except for little strangler stank stranglers. Stubborn ones. Don't want to come out. I gotta move that doorbell out of the way because we're closed today. That's Zeus walking in front of it. Zeus! Oh Lord, I hear that all day now. Any place in the shop he can sit, he chooses to sit in front of the door underneath the door chime. And sucker goes off every single time. Anyway. Okay, so we've got the uppers all apart. Now we're gonna clean this, okay? We're gonna add a coat of dye on it, condition it a little bit, then we're gonna go ahead and start stitching the welt on. Yes? You have something to say? You want something? What do you want? I know what you want. What do you want? You want to go out? You want to go out? You do? Where do you want to go? Outside? You want to go outside? You sure? You want to go outside? Come on, let's go outside. You want to go from the back? You want to go from? <laughs> All right, let's continue. This is a little acetone that we're using just to clean up that surface of that. It's not in too bad shape. You don't want to, you don't want to strip the whole surface. Just to kind of take that top dirt off of it. If there's any, maybe waxes or something that the customer put on, just wipe it down. Cool. With light color, I mean, you've got to add dye to it in order for it to get that white back you can't polish light color leather it's just not same as as adding dye to it to make it look fresh and white all right let's continue all right so this is the gto cross hatch pattern kind of cool that's what we'll be um that's what we'll be using. Now, the trick is going to be that we've got to be able to 
match that whole pattern with the old one. Oh, come on in. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a pro, okay? If I cut my hand, I'm going to cut it like a professional. <laughs> I mean, it happens. Some, but th th look, it doesn't. My thumb is in the way, but it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. I don't push my thumb. My thumb. I can't even talk. I don't push my thumb to the blade. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. I'm pulling my whole arm, you know, like towards me, but my thumb comes with it. My thumb doesn't go the opposite. Let's see. Yeah, my thumb doesn't go the opposite way as I'm cutting it. You understand? So that's our pattern, okay? <sighs> so what we'll do, maybe, we'll take a, we'll take a spray dye. What color? A little spray dye and then spray it on there and there's your pattern <laughs> i kills myself so yeah that's one of the easy way to do that to get that sample that pattern on there you know now you just punch the holes and this should fit in there perfectly okay let's right. continue so we've got we've got the uppers done They've been dyed. I put a little bit of light acrylic on them. This is an old, this is an old leather dye. Meltonian used to make them. They don't make them anymore. I think it's called New Life now. And I put a coat of that on there very lightly. You can't really cake this on there. Put a couple of light coats, light coats, light coats. And then condition it. And then on top of that, use a water repellent. This is what I use. This is the Tarago Nano Protector. Okay. So once that gets done, you've got a nice coating on the surface to keep it clean while you're working on it. Okay. Now, got a plastic wrap around here somewhere. This is a, this is like a painter's, um, Painters tape and plastic. Painters use, you know, house painting. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna protect this. Now, sometimes you put that tape on there that might remove some of that white dye. But I think if you heat it up a little bit, you know, while you're removing it, you should be okay. White is the most not complicated, but the most difficult color to keep clean, obviously, because it's white. Especially if you got a two-tone, like the wealth is going to be black, for example. It's going to be more difficult to keep it clean. Okay. I accidentally cut the tape. There's some little like razor teeth right there. When you bend it, it breaks. As I was saying, white color is very difficult to keep clean. You always got to touch it up. Sometimes you do more damage than touching it up. And Come on now. All right. Now this will protect it somewhat while I'm putting the welt on it. Obviously we don't need this, this, this all this length. Put it inside the shoe. Cool. Now some people ask me about my watches, right? I like, I like watches, I like different watches, not necessarily expensive watches, but different watches. This one, it says mini focus. Where are you? 
Now, look, I don't have any vested interest in this, right? I'm just showing you guys what I'm wearing. It's kind of cool. It's got like a carbon fiber leather texture. Blue and orange. Mini focus, mini focus, mini focus. You see that? So that's what I'm wearing today. I know somebody's going to ask, so I might as well tell you. And also my shoes. I'm not wearing my um, my Alden Indies today. Oh, let me show you guys. Zeus stepped on it a minute ago. Got it dirty. This is Undandy. You guys see that Undandy? It's just like a leather sneaker type. I kind of, you know, I, I dug the way it looked, you know. It's kind of cool looking. And um, I think they run like maybe like 130, something like that. You might find you might find it maybe cheaper on sale. So that's my wardrobe today, okay? All right, let's get back to work. All right, let me just move this a little bit closer to the edge. Awesome. All right, we're going to start rewelting. Let's continue. Feebings die. Try not to get this on your hands now, okay? Because it won't come off. It'll wear off. Can you see the flame? Woo! Watch it walk. You see it? It's walking, you see? Right there, it's right there. Still going. There it goes. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> I'll try that again. It's kind of cool. The welt. I don't know if you can see the the flame in the picture, but see it there it goes. Ow! <laughs> I got the dauber on fire. There it goes, and it's gone. <laughs> I love that when it walks over to the end. All right, let's continue. Oh, I do that just so it'll dry faster. Let's continue. So we are sewing the welt. It's called the jerk needle. There's a little hook at the end, right? So see all those holes? Those are the original welt holes, right? We're going to follow those. So what you do is when you're sewing, you just kind of twist this a little bit and you'll see the hole. And you line it up, push the needle through, put the thread on the hook, pull the thread through, loop it, pull the other thread, and then pull it nice and snug. Multiply that by, I don't know how many times. <clears throat> now there's other ways of doing this, right? There's two needles with two threads. Some people go from the inside of the shoe right there, of the gemming. Some people say doing it this way creates a bigger hole in the welt, therefore it's not waterproof. I don't know, man. I've just been doing this for years this way, and so far I've really not having had an issue with I mean they're dress shoes there's not they're not supposed to be waterproof you're not supposed to be stepping in puddles standing in puddles and so the water can absorb yeah you're gonna get caught in the rain I know that don't be silly of course I know that hey man you're gonna get wet shoes gonna get wet and it rains out here you know I know that that's not what I'm talking about <sighs> all right 
so I won't bore you for too long. I just thought I'd show you exactly how I do it. And we'll continue to go all the way around the shoe. This side's done already, see? Let's continue. All right, so at this stage, we've got the welt on, the heel rand on, which is this piece here, the shank, cork, and we're about to put the sole on. We got to make sure that we got to center this exactly so the cleats are not off centered. Fingers crossed. Check inside there. I think we're about centered. Now the heel ran, this piece right here is plastic. Most of the time I replace it when it's plastic with leather. So is the heel base. Now considering these are gonna be outdoor shoes, golf shoes, I think I'm gonna to decide to leave the plastic base and leave the heel ran plastic. So that creates a little problem with the glue because the glue is not really meant for plastic. Okay? So what I did was I put a, a top coat of, of super glue on the plastic, let that dry, and then put all-purpose masters, all-purpose cement, let that dry, and I heated it up, and then together so that should work pretty well rubber sticking to plastic we're gonna nail that down together and yeah, it looks pretty cool it's getting there all right let's continue All right, let me show you guys where we are so far. Now what I did was I sanded the edges down here. So when you're looking at it, it's not like a clunky shoe. Then I took that sanding pattern to a shank. It's just a pattern, just sanded that, sanded that pattern off and gave it like a narrow waist. Now he's, now this is, if I can speak, 
here is the heel base, okay? Obviously, the heel base goes here like this. Then we put the top lift on. Now, let me show you guys what I did on the top lift. I trimmed the same way, and I stitched the same way on the top lift. Now, this is just for looks, right? This is nothing, this is nothing to do with structural support at all. It's not going to hurt the way he's wearing the, the heels, okay? You can wear it. You can wear it. It's not going to bother it at all. Now, what we're going to do, right at the breast of the heel, see these little notches? We're going to take this, and we're going to bring the thread right underneath it, like that. Okay? So when this goes down on the shoe, I can't hold... I can't have, I need like three hands to hold this. I'll show you when it's done. That stitch pattern will follow that heel base, the breast of the heel, and continue on the top lift. It's going to look really cool. All right, let's continue. This is called a fudge wheel, right? It makes it leaves a pattern on the on the welt. If you guys can see the difference. Fudge wheel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A little bit of a pattern there, that's all. We are on our last leg of this journey. But unfortunately I don't have I don't have the spikes. Which is you know I have some spikes, but it's not gonna work for this one. And I've got some coming, but I don't have them in my hand. So we're gonna finish the video without without the without the spikes. It's getting there. A couple of little touch-ups here and there, and then we'll be done. Let's continue. All right, so welcome back. We are done with another project. They look pretty cool. I think they turned out pretty good. You know, the uppers were in great shape. They just needed a little bit of cleaning up and recoloring, conditioning, water repelling, and now they're, they're almost like new. The sole is a rubber sole. Punch the holes to put that plate underneath. Punch the holes here for the heel lift and put those T nuts underneath. Now we stitch the heel just just for aesthetics. You know, if you if you see its thread is kind of following up the heel breast and on top of the heel lift. It's just aesthetics. It's nothing really, it's nothing really, you know, structural issue. And then we sanded this pattern off here. Gave it a little bit of a unique look. New welt all the way around, obviously. You guys saw that. New leather welt. And um, other than that, we didn't really do much you know, much to that. So um, re-welting, re-dyeing the conditioning, the uppers, re-soling them. And now they're fairly, fairly new shoes. 
Now, I'm not sure if FootJoy still makes Goodyear welted shoes. I have no idea. Um, I've done a few FootJoys before, but I'm not really a golf specialist, you know, a repair specialist, I should say. So I don't know the history of it, but all I know is that these particular pairs are nice shoes. Um, leather uppers, leather lining, um, cork filled, Goodyear welted. I mean, it's, it's, it can't get any better than that, you know, so hopefully this will last them many more years to come. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it once more. Comment, share, subscribe, uh, hit the bell notification button. And um, I guess that's about it. Okay. And again, thank you for joining me. And we'll see you guys on the next project. All right. Take care.